All things and praises due to the basis foundation. God is most great. None has the right to be worshipped by you. Hello, everyone. Step Dog, the Hip Hop Prophet here. And I'm here with the next video in the YouTube series. And the name of this video is The Book of Revelation Revealed, Part 30. The, a the Three Angels, I'm sorry. Okay. And I'm going to read that section now. Then I saw another angel flying in midair. And he had the eternal gospel to proclaim to those who live on the earth, to every nation, tribe, language, and people. He said in a loud voice, Fear God and give him glory, because the hour of his judgment has come. Worship him who made the heavens, the earth, the sea, and the springs of water. A second angel followed and said, Fallen, fallen is Babylon the great, which made all the nations drink the maddening wine of her adulteries. A third angel followed them and said in a loud voice, If anyone worships the beast and its image and receives its mark on their forehead or on their hand, they too will drink the wine of God's fury, which has been poured full strength into the cup of his wrath. They will be tormented with burning sulfur in the presence of the holy angels and of the Lamb, and the smoke of their torment will rise forever and ever. There will be no rest, day or night, for those who worship the beast and its image, or for any who receives the mark of its name. This calls for patient endurance on the part of the people of God, who keep his commands and remain faithful to Jesus. Then I heard a voice from heaven say, Write this, Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord from now on. Yes, says the Spirit, they will rest from their labor for their deeds will follow them. Okay. Basically, these are topics for the speech, but I'm going to be honest with you. Technically, the whole book of Revelation is going to be the speech. This is what people need to know after the hour of judgment, that this is what God's going to do. If you don't get in line with it, you're done. Because um, I'll, I'll be honest with you. Everything prior to the... Um, the sections of the uh, that I've I've done so far. Um, okay, let me see. Where am I at? Basically, starting with the fifth trumpet. That's technically where the speech should start, but I'm going to even explain the sections prior to that in the speech, just to verify that yeah, I'm the second Christ. I'm the Christ of God's wrath. This is what proves it, these seals right here, and the recordings that I made. But technically, you know, all of these topics, like um, the woman and the dragon, the stuff about my mother and what she did, and that she sold her soul to the devil and she's Illuminati, that's going to be in the speech. The beast out of the sea, that's about the Illuminati. Obviously, that's going to be in the speech. The beast out of the earth, that's the Antichrist, that's Michael Jordan. That's going to be in the speech. The lamb and the 144,000 about the education system and whatnot. That's going to be in the speech. Um, then there's other sections following this, of course. But the three angels, everything that the three angels said, that's going to be mentioned in the speech. So let me go into that as well. Okay, then I saw another angel flying in midair, mid and he had the eternal gospel to proclaim to those who live on the earth, to every nation, tribe, language, and people. The gospel is the speech. And the speech is going to be televised. And all nations around the world are going to be watching this speech. You know, I mean, China might be so messed up that they're not even capable of it. But, you know, um, the majority of nations around the world, they're going to be watching this speech. They're going to want to know what, what's going on here. And he said in a loud voice, Fear God and give him glory because... The hour of his judgment has come. Worship him who made the heavens, the earth, the sea, and the springs of water. Okay, well, basically, I'm the Christ of God's wrath. Jesus was the Christ of God's love. And Jesus came here to save the Jews. So the Jews are done. You know what I mean? Um, they can't be saved. The only ones that are going to be saved are the Jews are the list of the 144,000. Now, obviously, this applies to men. Women can make up their minds either way. If a Jewish woman wants to submit to the golden rule, she could become a Muslim. If she doesn't, 
she's done. She's receiving her mark and she's dying and going to hell. But women are not in the same restriction that men are because men are responsible for the, re the religion. Men are responsible for directly dealing with God, not women. God never deals directly with women. Never. Women always have to go through men to, to connect with God. That's why women like witchcraft and devil worship because the devil's not like that. They can directly connect to the devil and that's why they gravitate towards the devil. But, you know, most of this when I speak about the Jewish man, that's why I say the Jewish man. It applies only to the Jewish men. Jewish women, if they want to decide to become Muslims of the Golden Rule, they can. But basically, you know, I'm going to be telling people to fear God and give God glory. I'm not going to be telling people to love God like Jesus was because the only thing I love about God is I love the truth and God is the truth. But other than that, like the stuff that God's making me do or the way I'm being jerked around right now and all this other stuff, nah, nah, I can't love God for that. I've been willing to do what God wanted me do, to do ever since I knew what the golden rule was. Well, even before that, once I know what God wants me to do, I'm willing to do it and I'm still getting yanked around and I don't appreciate it. So, you know, I'm not going to be telling people to love God. I'm going to be telling people, you need to fear God. Because if you don't fear God, God's going to, you're going to die and God's going to torture you nonstop in hellfire. So that's what that's about. And there is only one God. God is real. There is only one God. You need to worship him who made the heavens, the earth, the sea, and the springs of water. Okay, so now, a second angel followed and said, Fallen. Fallen is Babylon the Great, which made the nations drink the maddening wine of her adulteries. Okay, Babylon the Great is the sixth kingdom of the devil, the Illuminati. Now, basically, there's a section in here called Babylon, where, you know, it's, it's later on in the book. But basically, what Babylon is, it's the prostitute on the beast. Okay, well, everybody already knows the beast is the Illuminati. What is a prostitute? A prostitute is a woman who sells herself. But that's not what this means here. You know, it's all about selling. The selling of something. Well, where do you sell something? Even a prostitute. Where does she, where, where does she go? She goes to the corner or whatever. And that's where her market is. The prostitute is the market. The marketplace is where things are bought and sold. But they use the word prostitute here because, you know, a lot of this is image, imagery based. You know, a lot of it is visions and you have to interpret what the vision means. And that's what is meant there. But that's what Babylon the Great is. And what's the main market in the world? The New York stock market. Basically, all other markets around the world revolve around the New York stock, stock market. So Babylon the Great is the fall of of the sixth kingdom of the devil, the Illuminati and the New York stock market. Because after the hour of judgment, there will be no more need for the New York stock market. There will be no stock exchange. So that's what this is about. That's what that is. That's what's meant there. And not only that, but the Illuminati controls the entire world. So, you know, the Illuminati made all the nations drink the maddening wine of her adulteries. Okay, so now, a third angel followed them and said in a loud voice, If anyone worships the beast and its image and receives its mark on their forehead or on their hand, they too will drink the wine of God's fury, which has been poured full strength into the cup of, of his wrath. Okay, well, basically what that means, if you want to stay, there will be no religion also after the hour of judgment. The golden rule is not an, a religion. It is a rule. It is one rule that you need to follow. It is not a religion. And the rules of the kingdom of God are like the rules of society. They're not like, it's not going to be a religion. God doesn't want religion. Now you know, after the hour of judgment, everybody knows God is real and that there is only one God. So there is no, there is nothing to believe in anymore. You already know that God is real. So it's either you want to follow the golden rule, which is one rule, or you do not. No religions will be tolerated any further. If you still wish to continue to believe in something else, you will receive a mark on your right hand or your forehead, and you are done. Or if you wish to continue to not believe in God, you're done. 
And basically that's what it's saying there. Anybody who wished to continue to believe in anything else other than God is real or believe that God is real doesn't exist, yeah, you're receiving a mark on your right hand or your forehead. You're going to die and you're going to be tortured nonstop for 1,000 years in the pit of hell. That's what that means. Okay, so now. They will be tormented with burning sulfur in the presence of the holy angels and of the Lamb. Okay. Before I die in this world, all the marks that die, um, they're going to be tortured by the angels in the pit of hell. And then basically, after I die, the rod goes with me. Like, the rod doesn't stay here on earth. Basically, when I return to God in heaven... The, the rod returns with me. And then God sends me into the pit of hell and I torture the devil and everybody in there with the rod for a thousand years. So that's, what, that's why it says the angels and the lamb. Because after that, after I die in this world, that's what I do. Okay. And the smoke of their torment will rise forever and ever. There will be no rest day or night for those who worship the beast and its image or for any who receives the mark of its name. This calls for patient endurance on the part of the people of God who keep his commands and remain faithful to Jesus. Okay, God's going to begin giving out marks after the hour of judgment. By, by the time the day of ascension comes, like, like, I'll say it to you like this. Before the two witnesses are killed here in Philadelphia, everybody who decided to not follow the golden rule, they're going to have a mark. So it's everything's going to be determined before the day of resurrection who has marks and who does not have marks. And um, let's see here. Okay. And the reason um, for the patient endurance is anybody who decides to follow the golden rule, Okay, the hour of judgment has come and passed. The locusts are still going to come, so you're going to have to endure through that. The mother of all wars is going to come, so you're going to have to endure through all that. And then after that, the third woe is the seven bowls of God wrath. So basically what, God, what, what is being said here is you need, if you, if you choose to follow the golden rule and, you know, worship and submit to the will of God and decide that you want to go to heaven, well, then you need to endure through all of that and realize through all of that, there's going to be people with marks around trying to harm you and, you know, people who want to follow the golden rule. So, you know, you just have to endure through all of it. And basically, um, that's what's meant there. Okay. Then I heard a voice from heaven saying, write this, blessed are the dead who die in the Lord from now on. Yes says the Spirit, they will rest from their labors for their deeds will follow them. Okay, well, basically, what is meant by this is um, anybody who decides to follow the golden rule from this point forward, um, they're going to heaven when they die. That's what's meant by those who die in the Lord. You know what I mean? Basically, if you decided to follow the golden rule, you're dying in the Lord. You you did ex you followed the ex the rule that God wanted you to follow in this life, and because of that, you're going to heaven when you die. You're good, and you get and you also receive ever everlasting life because if you go to heaven, you live forever. And when it says yes, says the Spirit, um, they will rest from their labor, for their deeds will follow them. That's God saying that, and basically what God is saying there, yeah. They will rest from their labor and their deeds will follow them. You know, anybody who decides to follow the golden rule, God loves them for that. And, you know, that's a deed in and of itself. And that will follow you. God will judge you based on that and you will go to heaven. But not only that, say you're a person who never pray, prayed before and, um, you know, it's the last day of your life. Like you get killed. But before you get killed, you decide, I'm going to follow the golden rule and you start praying. Well, if you do that and you don't get to 100 prayers, God will still remember that's the last thing you did. And God, you know, that might be enough to um, save you from the pit of hell and for you to go to heaven. So that is the three angels. All thanks and praises due to the basis foundation. God is most great. None has the right to be worshipped but you.